الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني في قولي يا كريم واكرمني بنور الفهم واخرجني من ظلمات الوهم ان شاء الله just gonna carry on with a little bit left from last week's tafsir verse number 34 and inshallah verse number 35 and 36 we should try and cover today so um Last week we learnt how the angels were commanded to prostrate to Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam went through the type of sujood, uh, the sajda of ibadah, sajda ta'zim, tahiyyah and this was a prostration of respect to Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam not towards and um, it is when the sajda took place, Hazrat Adam salam now began to stay in Jannah. And as I mentioned before, the time of Mawlid, the Sayyidina Adam salam felt lonely. Okay, because he couldn't, he, there was no one else except him in terms of his own being, human being. He was only a uh, human being in Jannah. And so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Sayyidina Hawa radiallahu ta'ala anha. So the next Jum'ah, so this sajda happened one Friday. The next Friday, Adam alayhi salam went to sleep and then the angels, they took, they cut the left chest of St. Adam السلام, took out one rib without any pain um, and immediately after within seconds uh, by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beautiful lady Sayyidina Hawa radiallahu ta'ala anha was created okay and that is why right, it's towards the left towards the heart and it's a bent rib, so don't try and straighten the rib, don't try and bend it more, you're going to break it. So don't be too strict to your wives, don't be too soft to your wives. If you be too strict, okay, you're going to break her. And if you be too soft, she's going to break you. <laughs> okay, so you have to be in between, moderation is key in everything. <clears throat> and towards the heart. So, sometimes men, you won't understand women because they're not created near the brain, than the heart. So it's about love. So you should let go of things. If the chapar is not round enough, you know, out of Muhammad eat the triangle ones. It's fine. Uh, okay. So, um, when she was created, and we all know, um, the angels said to Adam alayhi salam, you need to pay the dowry, the mahar. The mahar was to send salawat upon the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam three uh, to ten times. And the angels were the witnesses to this nikah ceremony. What, what was the story? Uh, durud, salawat upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa now the word Hawa is derived from the word Hayyun, living, alive. Because Sayyidatuna Hawa radiallahu ta'ala, our best mother, was created from a living being, Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam. And later on, um, we'll discuss, then, doesn't she become a daughter of Adam alayhi salam? Okay, and we're going to dwell into that later on, inshallah, in the following verse. And the word in Arabic, Imra'atun, is from Imra'un, Umru'un, i.e. man. 
just add the tad the end. And she was, in one narration, also 60 feet tall. And she lived for 997 years. So she lived 65 years after Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam. 997 years. Where was she born? Where was she created? We're going to dwell into this in the following verse, insha'Allah. Is this verse 34? Yeah, we're just carrying This is an introduction to the next verse. So, verse 34 to 35 in between. How many years did she live? 997. 997. So, from the previous verse, last week's verse about sujood, wa yithquna lil malaikati sujood li Adam, we learn number one that Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam is far superior, greater in rank than all the rest of the angels. Number two, that the respect of a teacher is paramount, important upon the student. Number three. That ostentation, pride, is a evil deed, is one of the deeds of the heart, and because of this, shaitan became misguided. Number four, we learn that the command of Allah is wajib. When Allah asked, uh, commanded the angels to prostrate to Adam alayhi salam, this was wajib, not optional one. And because he rejected, therefore he became misguided. Number five, we learned that we should not be proud about our, our worships, our deeds. You never know what is our ending. We should be, always be afraid. This was a lesson. Number six, that in Sharia, we always look at the apparent state of a person. In other words, we apply rulings according to his apparent state, not the inner state. In other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that shaitan is going to become kafir, yet he was still made a mu'allimul malaika, because apparently at that moment he did not act upon kufr. Even though Allah, in Allah's knowledge, He knew He is not a believer. But at that moment of time, the apparent state was that He was a believer, so regard Him as a believer. Unless Kufr becomes clear, and then we have to act upon the apparent state. We don't, we don't, now these people, what they do, um, they don't wear hijab, or they don't want to keep a beard, or whatever. They say, oh, our hearts are clean, you know. Our hearts with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay, but apparent, hukam is an apparent. Okay, if you don't do something apparently, then the hukam of sharia is that you're wrong, you're fasiq, you're sinful. Uh, number seven, we learn the importance of respecting the Prophet sallallahu alayhi From all acts of kufr, okay, the most, uh, the worst type of kufr is disrespecting a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa alayhi salam number eight to commit sin is not kufr but to deem sins as halal good then it becomes kufr Now, that's why um, Iblis, he just rejected one prostration and he became kafir. And we, uh, Muslims generally, they miss all these prayers, yet they're still Muslims. Okay, the difference is because we do not reject uh, prostration, sajda. We deem it still haram to miss prayers, but due to our laziness, Weakness of Iman, we don't pray. Uh, 
and that's why the ulama they have stated even to mock sunnat ghair muakkada non emphasized sunnah is an act of kufr okay to make a joke of uh, out of sunnat ghair muakkada non emphasized sunnah is also an act of kufr and you know disrespecting the prophet alayhi salam no matter how knowledgeable you might be how wise or pious you might be nothing is of use <coughs> the question now is that iblis <coughs> shaitan did not exist all this time till iblis rejected the command of allah then we say he became shaitan he became rajim he became Iblis. So the question is, then why is it that the shayatin, the jinns on earth, thousand years ago, they created havoc, problems on earth, destruction. If shayatin did not exist, if Iblis and his uh, you know, company, people did not exist, then how come other jinns, they, were, they became rebellious on earth? So the reason is because jinns, they also have nafs. And nafs, amaratun bisu, the, the lowest type of nafs, always commands a person to do evil. So even if shaitan was not to be created, people would naturally do evil because of their nafs. Like in Ramadan. Like in month of Ramadan, the shaitan are chained. Yet people do wrong things. They still... Kajan ghiba, lying, betraying, fraud, deceiving people, committing sins, not praying prayers, not giving zakat, is because of the nafs. The nafs is still there. Okay, now inshallah we're going to start verse number 35 today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقُلْنَا يَا آدَمُ <coughs> And we said to, and we said, O oh Adam, أُسْكُنْ أَنْتَ وَزَوْجُكَ You yourself and your wife. أُسْكُنْ Stay, dwell in Jannah. وَكُلَا مِنْهَا رَغَدًا حَيْثُ شِئْتُمَا And both of you kula, kul kula kulu, tathniya. And you two eat from Jannah رَغَدًا As much as you wish in abundance. حَيْثُ شِئْتُمَا Wherever you want to eat it from. So go in any part of Jannah and eat whatever you want in abundance. However, وَلَا تَقْرَبَا don't, don't eat, don't come close. Don't come close to what? هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَةَ Don't come close to this tree. And we're going to talk about this in detail. Why? What would be the result if you were to come close to this tree? Now close to see I mean to eat from this tree. Fatakuna, you two will become from what? Min al mean from those who transgress, from those who do zulam, from those who do wrong, wrongdoers, those who go beyond the limits. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse, now at this point, when shaitan became rejected, when he became Iblis, he was kicked out of Jannah. <coughs> he was not allowed to stay in Jannah. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Adam alayhi salam, Ya Adam, O oh Adam, Uskun anta. You yourself live 
because the verse was more concerned about Adam alayhi salam. Hazrat Hawa radiallahu ta'ala anha is secondary here. But primary mutakallim towards whom Allah subhanahu is talking to is Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam. Ya Adam, O Adam, uskur anta wa zawjuk. You yourself and your wife dwell in Jannah. Now the word here is zawjuka, zawjun. But sometimes to differentiate between husband and wife, you add it at the end, zawjatun. Here, there was no need because in the previous Allah says, Ya Adam, anta. Ya Adam, uskun anta. O Adam, you live and your zawj, your partner. So we all know it was Sayyidina Hawa radiallahu ta'ala. And so there was no need of writing that at the end of zawj. So zawj means partner. Why was Hawa radiallahu ta'ala anhu commanded to stay with Adam alayhi salam in Jannah? One of the reasons is so that Adam alayhi salam would find peace, harmony, tranquility, you know, who feel relaxed. Number two, <clears throat> now this is tafsir, okay? So that Sina Hawa radiallahu ta'ala learns how the houses, the palaces of Jannah are decorated. So when she would come on earth, she would know how to organize a house. Okay, that's why men, we do a miserable job when we decorate or when we saw the house out. Okay, we end up putting... Um, Oven in the kitchen, I mean in, in the bathroom, and shower in the kitchen. Obviously no, but not I'm not saying, not that bad, I know. But generally, we don't know how to make it beautiful. Okay, sometimes we choose things and then we like, oh, no way. Yeah, it's nice, no way. Okay, so we leave everything to them. Okay, you just hand over the money. Just empty the pockets. So okay. is this why they were educated in general? Yeah, she had to stay. Okay, one of us is to learn. Okay, because she's gonna become a mother. Okay, she's first female human being, and then the children are to be created on earth. So they would know how to organize the house. You know, to look at the beauty of the house, how to uh, uh, organize the house, set the house up. Also. She was, she learned the, the beauty, how a woman looks beautiful. Okay, the women of Jannah. So that on earth, okay, the, the women can adorn themselves for their husbands. And it's an act of reward. Yeah, people nowadays we get wives beautifying themselves if they need to go out. Yeah, and the poor husband never seen. Her beautiful face. She's always miserable in the house. Rather, it is an act of reward for a woman to adorn for the husband and the husband to beautify himself for the wife. It's an act of reward? Thawab? <laughs> okay. So these are many wisdoms behind why Sayyidatuna Hawa radiallahu ta'ala anha was told to stay in Jannah. Now the question is, where was she created? Some ulama they have stated <coughs> that now this is Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas and Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. That she was created in Jannah. A reason because it was when Adam went to sleep in Jannah that she was created from the left rib of Adam alayhi salam. And certain ulama like uh, scholars, Sahaba, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, 
and other great ula, uh, scholars and mufassirun have stated that they were the, she was created on earth Adam Muslim was also on earth okay and then they were taken to Jannah so if you were to take the first opinion that she was created in Jannah so the verse would mean you remain in Jannah O Adam you and Hawa remain in Jannah and if you were to take the second opinion that she was created on earth and then she was placed into Jannah that meant you and Hawa stay in Jannah go in Jannah okay. Subhanallah huh? now this is a very nice topic because it talks about food from all the acts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded them to do kula, eat Kao pio Sorry, brother Huh? Yeah To show the what's in the menu Ragadan Full stomach In abundance You're free to eat as much as you wish I was reading yesterday I was teaching the, uh, in Madrasa that, you know, the people of Jannah, okay, they would see certain birds flying in Jannah and they would wish, if they were to wish to eat that bird, automatically it will come in front of them cooked. Huh? If they, and the rivers of uh, water, of milk and honey and pure wine will be flowing underneath their houses. And if they wish... Today I want to drink milk, okay, a bowl of milk will come in front of them. They just need to think. Okay, and once they've eaten, okay, no runny noses, nothing. All they'll do is they're going to burp, and they'll have a bit of sweat, fragrant burp, musk, Calvin Klein. Huh? I don't sweat, it's spicy. Spicy. Sweat. Fragrant, fragrant, smelling, nice. And that bird will digest the food. That's it. So don't be in jail. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know about hot food though. There'll be no fire in Jannah. But natural law will create. Allah, we'll, we'll see, inshallah. Okay. Okay. So they were told to eat <coughs> Well I saw they would learn how to eat They were the first human beings So this was like a training place for them They were being trained how to live a worldly life <coughs> So Raghadan Raghad Freely, as much as you wish. There were no limits. Because there's no fear of any illnesses. We eat a lot of sugar, we fear everything diabetes, diabetes toothache. Yeah, cholesterol, all these problems will emerge. In Jannah, no problems, subhanAllah. And not only this, haythu shi'tuma, wherever you want. Sha'a yasha'u, ma Allah, what Allah wills. I, they were allowed to go to all levels of Jannah because every different level, every level is different. So they were allowed to go to any level of Jannah and to eat their fruits and to relax. Subhanallah, how amazing, huh? So imagine when Adam came on earth, 
dunya, from the loftiest place of Jannah, okay, we can only we can't even think about Jannah, the beauty of Jannah. And Adam saw, tasted, lived in Jannah, and then he came on earth. What must have been his state? Huh? However, then, now because it's training ground, when human beings are going to live on earth, there will be certain things which will be halal, and there will be certain things which will be haram. Okay, to create that sense of responsibility in Adam alayhi salam, said Hawa radiallahu ta'ala anha, that eat responsibility, I being careful, the limits. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he put one limit there. وَلَا تَقْرَبَا هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَةِ don't come close to this tree. And mind you, no Mufassir has said it, it was an apple. Apple tree. <laughs> that's school. Adam's apple. <laughs> so... Now here, taqraba, closeness, it doesn't mean going past, coming close. They wanted to go and come close, i.e. to eat from it. Yeah, I'm coming to this. So when it says, wala taqraba, it means don't eat from the tree. <clears throat> don't eat. Like for example, you know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, wala taqrabu hunna. All men don't come close to women in a state of menstruation. It doesn't mean close. It means to do the act. Or وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا مَالِ الْيَتِيمِ Don't come close to the wealth of yatim, orphans. It doesn't mean you're not allowed to touch. I right? to use the wealth of the orphans. So here, using the tree. I right? eating from the fruits or whatever it was uh, of the tree. Now, what type of tree was it? Number one, the most dominant opinion was that it was apple tree. What? No, wheat. Wheat. But wheat is a small tree. Plant. A plant. Okay. A small tree. A wheat. It had wheat. That's the most accepted opinion. Yeah, wheat. Gehu. <coughs> That's wheat, yeah? Or barley? Oat? What's the difference? Wheatabix. Wheat no, Wheatabix is made out of wheat. Mm. Hence, Wheatabix. <laughs> 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 no, it's the porridge that's made out of oat. <laughs> 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 that's what women call you, sorry. Yeah, so it is Wheatabix, I told you. <laughs> now, do you know the wheat? They were big, they were sweeter than honey, and very soft. And that's because of this, now, when Adam al came on earth, you know, we became risk of human beings. Okay, there are more people eating wheat than any other food in the entire world. And then rice. Then fish. Number two. One narration was, it was a grape tree, full of nice grapes, inab, angur, and that is why wine became haram upon human beings, made out of grapes. But what is that? Grapes. No, I'm saying wine. Wine. Then why, why? Why did you say it became haram? Wine. Because you said wine, 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 grape. wine is made out of grapes. Because Adam said, well, I'm not to eat it, I'm going to say, Haram. It doesn't matter, don't worry. Okay, number three, some say, um, they were teen, figs. <laughs> what teen was Zaytun? Figs. So do you know when Adam al came on earth, came down, he wrapped himself with fig leaves. Figs. 
No, this is a narration fix. That's why figs also have any fruit. On, and there's another narration um, which you don't mention the actual food. But as I told you before, the most dominant opinion is wheat. 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 So, but if it's a, it's a tree, then how can you eat? Wheat, a plant, tree, shajara, a small tree, like a plant. So a tree is not and maybe in Jannah it was a tree, we don't know. Yeah, maybe. So it was made. Now, you know, wheat tree, that, it was only one wheat tree in Jannah, and it was that one. There's no wheat in Jannah. I don't know. Allah Adam is so up. I just have to. No, because that tree was created as a test. It was a test. Because nothing's haram in Jannah. Kullu halal. But it was only because I told you it was a training ground, a training place. Okay? To train them about eating in accordance to the will of Allah, not to transgress the limits laid down by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, I don't know. Wallah alim as But it doesn't exist anymore. No. No, it's finished. The, the test over. It was only for a test, temporary. Yeah. Fatakuna minal dhalimeen. So that you do not become from those who do dhulam. Now, dhulam in Quran have many, many meanings. Okay, dhulam can mean kufar, dhulam can mean shirk, dhulam means sins, evil. He also means to transgress. Yeah, it means to oppress. So many, many meanings. To go beyond limits. So here means to go beyond limits because obviously Adam alayhi salam they are free from major minor sins. Amazing point. Subhanallah. The uh, Hawa radiallahu ta'ala anha could have been created the way Adam also was created. Independently. But no, she was created from Adam alayhi salam so that this bond would become closer. Mutual love, affection, understanding would become more closer. Secondly, subhanallah. From Adam alayhi salam ila yawm al qiyama, there be two things, the two acts of worship, if you can call it that way, that started from Adam alayhi salam and remain from generation to generation till yawm al qiyama. And that is first iman. The Adam alayhi salam was mu'min. Of every era, there will be Muslims till, till yawm al qiyama. And number two, nikah. Remain. He started from Jannah. Okay. Remain. And these are the only two things we want to take it back to Jannah. Our partners and Iman. No worship, no zakat, no hajj, nothing. So understand the beauty of nikah. The importance of nikah. Okay. The seriousness of nikah. Nowadays it's like get together. No, I'm not. I'm talking about what marriage is. Okay? Sacrifice. You have to sacrifice. Huh? Is that what's supposed to be? Is that what's supposed to be? What is? Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Sacrifice what? You have to sacrifice your sleep. You have to sacrifice your wallet. So what the two things? Huh? What the two things? Nikah. Nikah and Iman. So you came from Jannah, Nikah and Iman. And we're going to take it back with us. Nikah and Iman.
Subhanallah. Amazing point. Mm. Very, very deep. Very, deep. very, very romantic. Is it romantic? Okay, romantic. I'm just repeating the words they've said, so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now what happened? فَأَزَلَّهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ Verse number 36 فَأَزَلَّ أَزَلَّ يُزِلُّ Okay, it's from the word أَزَلَّ زَلَّةٌ To slip, to fall To become distant Then Shaitan caused the two, i.e. Adam alayhi salam and Hawa radiallahu ta'ala anha to slip out, to come out of Jannah. وَأَخْرَجَهُمَا And he removed them from Jannah from their abode مِمَا كَانَ فِيهِ وَقُلْنَا هَبِطُوا بَعْضُكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ عَدُوٍ and Allah says, we said to them, Ihbitu, come down on earth. O Adam, alayhi salam, O Hawa, radiallahu ta'ala, O Iblis, shaitan, come down on earth. Ba'dukum li ba'din adu. As enemies of one, of each other. Walakum fil ardi mustaqarra. And for you, there's a settlement, istiqrar, a place of living on earth. وَمَتَاعَ And provision. So you're going to live, and you're going to eat, and you're going to stay on earth. إِلَى For a limited time. I till death. Now this is an introduction of death. Because there's no death in Jannah. Only as soon as they came on earth, Allah said, O oh Adam, السلام, you, your children, will stay on earth. This is your place of living and a place of mata, of provisions, of risk sustenance. Ilahin till a appointed time. Now, how did Adam, how did Shaitan we can't see misguide um, influence the decision of Adam alayhi salam Hazrat Hawa radiallahu ta'ala anha some Mufassirun they have stated that Shaitan he was kicked out of Jannah but he was allowed to come in and get out. But he was not allowed to stay there. But some say he was totally abandoned from Jannah. He was not allowed to enter Jannah. So you had to think of a way of somehow, because he was jealous. Okay? And now, because of jealousy, he was kicked out of Jannah and Adam a.s. Remain in Jannah. So he wanted somehow to get Adam as out of Jannah, out of jealousy. Hasad. Now, some there's a narration. The peacock <coughs> on a snake, a beautiful snake. Not poisonous source, just general snakes. They were serving Adam alayhi salam. So Shaitan, he went, he waited outside the doors of Jannah.
So Shaitan talked to the peacock and said, Can you go and call Adam and Hawa somehow here? Now what happened? The peacock began to dance. Okay? And Hazrat Adam and Hazrat Hawa alayhi salam radiallahu ta'ala anha they got occupied looking at the, the birds dance. And whilst they were looking the peacock moved towards the door of Jannah. Again them Move towards the door of Jannah. And this is how they converse. Ad um, Shaitan converse with um, Adam alayhi salam. So he's begun to first. Do you know what shaitans are like? He said, Oh, woe to me that I disrespected you. I did not prostrate to you. And because of this, I became cursed, rejected regime. Now I want to, I want to comp- uh, see forgiveness and compensate for that mistake error I made. I can feel sorry. Okay, I did this because of this. I'm being taken off Jannah. Now I want to, you know, make up for this mistake, error. And I want to honor you, respect you, and give you that rank, okay, which you deserve. <laughs> huh? And so that your anger becomes less. Then he said, O Adam alayhi salam, remember one day, all this we're going to finish, you're going to die. All these provisions, this, you know, peace and harmony you're living in, in, in Jannah, will die one day, will finish. So Adam alayhi salam asked, Shaitan, what is death? What is mold? What is death? So Shaitan fell in front of Adam alayhi salam like a dead corpse. To motionless. So you're going to become like this. And then he began to move and, you know, move his feet and hands as if his ruh is coming out. I guess Sakrat, the agonies of death. Okay, so now looking at this, Adam alayhi salam and Hawa, you know, they got a bit frightened. Now some of us did say it was only Hawa radiallahu ta'ala here, not Adam alayhi salam. Adam was still there in Jannah. Yeah? Now because Adam already knew what Mot was through his in, so some of us did have said it was only Hawa who was conversing with Shaitan. And you know, that's why if you want to make the husband understand something, go through the wife. If, if you want something from the husband, go through the wife. Okay, so he said, but I know, I want to... You know, I feel sorry, I disrespected you, but I'm going to tell you something, secret. I've been here for... I was here... As a teacher, I'm going to inform you something. And what is that? Do you know that tree? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to you not to eat, not to come close to that tree. If you were to eat those fruits, okay, you are going to be destined to live here forever. 
Are you going to live here forever? You're not going to die. So that's why he said, هَلْ, هَلْ أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَى شَجَرَةِ الْخُلْدِ Shouldn't I inform you, tell you about everlasting tree? A tree that if you were to eat, you're going to live here forever. Whoever eats from that tree, he will never die and his kingdom will never become perished. So now what happened? Adam alayhi salam, Sayyidina Hawa radiallahu ta'ala anha, in one narration, went to Adam alayhi salam and said, you know, a very wise person of Jannah told me this, that if we were to eat from this tree, we are going to live here forever. So then, he then the shaitan also said, "Manahakuma rabbukum an hadi shajara." Your Lord did not prevent you from his tree, prohibit you from his tree. It except what's the reason? Illa takuna malakain. So you become angelic. I live forever. Oh, takuna min al khalidin. Oh, also, well, the other reason is so that you become from those who live here forever. I say, I was trying to say it's not haram. I is recommended not to, not to eat because Allah wants you to come on earth. But if you want to eat it, you live here forever. There's no harm. Now you know with Shaitan with his mockery, his words and his hikmah, you know, began to change their thinking. And then he said, وَقَاسَمَهُمَا He did qasam. This is another verse. Okay. وَقَاسَمَهُمَا إِنِّي لَكُمَا لَمِنَ النَّاصِحِينَ He said, by Allah, do you know who I am? Nasih. I'm giving good advice. Nothing else. I'm only giving you good advice. If you want to stay here, I know. That you will stay here forever only if you were to eat that tree. And this is what Shaitan now try, tries his best with human beings. If you want to commit a sin, okay, he'll try and give you a good advice. He puts it in your head. You know, for example, ghibah is haram. Okay, and you're talking to a group of people about someone. The shaitan puts you in your head, it's, it's not haram. You're informing your friends about her, the, his or her evil so that they can be protected. So you think, oh, that's a good, good reason for me to do ghibah. I'm going to rob a bank so that I can fund OIC. <laughs> that's what you don't. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm going to... I'm not allowed to lie, but I'm going to lie so that I don't create any problems within family. Nasiha, advice, shaitan says, this is what happens, this is the first step, two sins. Okay, why will a human being, a Muslim, commit sin? It's because first he's been advised by the shaitan that don't worry, it's not haram, it's haram, the temple for this reason is good. He was made to forget. There's another verse. 
who was made to forget. So, so you know all this tafsir, but from the different, different, many, many hadith, tafsirs, companions. Okay, and this is exactly what the Mufas is saying. That Allah did not confirm with Allah, uh, Adam Asam did not confirm this with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on, on other angels because he was made to forget. It was destined. That he, is, he had to come down on earth. Okay, he was made a Khalifa not in Jannah on earth. Okay, but as I told you, Jannah was a training ground for him. Okay, if a person, now human beings, if they were to do wrong, how would they repent? What did they need to do? Look at your forefather. Okay, they came out of Jannah, cried for 200 years, and then he did Tawbah, and then Allah accepted him. Accepted his Tawbah, even though it wasn't a sin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why he cried for 200 years. Hmm? Imagine a tree of Jannah and an oak tree, <laughs> or that tree over there. Yeah? Dark night, there's no night in Jannah, there's no darkness in Jannah, it's only will be daytime. That's what some, I was reading in um, some books that how would people know it's time to sleep? Automatically, there'll be beautiful curtains that will close the windows, uh, draw t- together, and become Dark. darker, dimmer in the house, in the palaces. And you feel relaxed. And, we'll and then you'll open in the morning. Huh? Subhanallah. And, um, <laughs> and the least, well, yesterday I was reading from the least person, Jannah, the lowest level of Jannah, person will have 80. Thousand servants, Louis, <laughs> and seventy-two wives. Wives, Okay, I forgot to uh, forgot to mention, Adam alayhi salam was only allowed to go to Hawa radiallahu taala. No one else, no Hurayin, because Hurayin are rewards for Muslims in Akhirah. Okay, so even the Hurayin. Hur, they were there, but he was not allowed to marry any other women except Hazrat Hawa radiallahu ta'ala anha. Because Hur'een are rewards for believers later on. Okay? In the Akhirah. Allahu Akbar. Now what happened? Adam, you know, Shaitan, he wanted to remove Khilafah from Adam Ali Salam. Okay? He's a leader. He was made a leader. So I want to take away this leadership from him. This Khilafah from him. So I'm going to make sure he disobeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah removes that from him. But no. We understand the you know, ishtihadi error. I use the intellect to do something. Are you making an error? It's, it's like the difference between Shafi'i and Maliki. It's ishtihadi error. So there's a, a rather if if a if an imam was ishtihad to derive a ruling. If he was correct, he'll get double the reward. If he's incorrect, he gets one reward. For effort. It's called Ishtihadi. Okay, same, you know, these Sahaba Kiram, Radwanullah Rajma'in, especially in the battle between Sayyidina Ali, Radiallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Amin Muawiyah, Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhuma. Okay, it was Ishtihadi error from Hazrat Amin Muawiyah, Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu. Yeah, that's wrong. It's wrong? Yeah. 
we are not allowed to. We don't have enough intellect, wisdom, hikmah, knowledge, uh, insight, nur of Allah to dwell into the Quran and Hadith Mubarakah to derive rulings. If I was to tell you, I'll give you Bukhari Sharif and Quran Sharif in two hours, tell me the whole method of praying Salat al Janazah. You'll be there all your life. You'll not know it. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop here because I'm, it's, it's, it's a bit long and deep I'm, because it's a long one, two, seven, eight pages. Well, I'm going, to, I'm going to stop here. I'm going to mention, we're going to stop, start from talking about what happened as soon as they ate from that tree. tree. What happened to them? The clothes, the clothes and everything. Yeah. Okay, and how they came down, what happened, what came down with them. On earth, where did they came? And we're going to talk about the death of Adam, السلام, how long he lived for, what happened to his children, all that, inshallah, uh, in the following weeks. Inshallah. So let me just repeat the verse. وَقُلْنَا يَا آدَمُ سْكُنْ أَنْتَ وَزَوْجُكَ الْجَنَّةُ O Adam, السلام, you and your wife dwell in Jannah. وَكُلَا مِنْهَا رَغَدًا حَيْثُ شِئْتُمَا And eat from Jannah in abundance as you like. ولا تقرب هذه الشجرة and do not approach this tree lest you become one of those who transgress the limits, go beyond the limits. فأزلهم الشيطان عنها فأخرجهما then Shaitan caused them to slip out Azalla to distance them from Jannah and took them out from Jannah remove them from Jannah مما كان فيه وَقُلْنَا هَبِطُوا بَعْضُكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ عَدُوا And we said, get down all of you as enemies to one another. وَلَكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مُسْتَقَرٍ And for you, there is a place of living, istiqrar, settlement on earth. وَمَتَاعٌ إِلَى حِينَ And provision till a limited time, appointed time. That's it. Okay, so next week we're going to finish this and then the next verse is talking about the Tawbah of Adam alayhi yeah. salam and inshallah hopefully we're going to go in the topic of Tawbah. <laughs> what Tawbah is, how to do Tawbah and what are the signs of Tawbah and Nasuha from Imam Ghazali's book hopefully next week. Any questions? Do I have you next two hours or no?